The solo queue meta has been on a wild ride the past few patches, so it's time for another update on the best solo carries. We'll be covering three champions for each role that our analysts believe to hold the greatest ability to impact games for 12.14. But before we get into it, be sure to check out Skillcapped if you want to truly get better at League of Legends. We're the only service that offers a money back guarantee if you don't climb at least 5 divisions while actively using our service. We do this because our service really does work, and if it doesn't work for you, you shouldn't pay. Learn more at the end of this video or click the link in the description below. 12.14 is going to put extremely high priority on Shen. Dragons becoming more powerful means it's going to be vital that your team secures as many as possible. With Shen's global ultimate, he's one of the only top laners who can help his team consistently achieve this. Sunfire is nerfed for 12.14, but keep in mind Shen is a perfectly viable alternative in Frostfire, so Sunfire changes won't affect him at all. You'd think with how strong Shen's map impact can be that his laning phase would suffer as a result, but that's not the case at all. Shen runs Flash with Ignite, and by playing around your W cooldown, you'll be able to win out on short trades super easily. Mord is being played a good amount in meta and is a more difficult matchup for most Shen players, so he's a good ban option. Opt for a more offensive build in solo queue by going Frostfire into Titanic Hydra. Thornmail, Force of Nature, or Randuins are all viable third items depending on the game. For runes, roll with Grasp, followed by Shield Bash, Second Wind, and Revitalize. Cheap Shot and Ultimate Hunter are optimal secondaries. Logging down our second solo carry slot for top lane is Sejuani. Sej is such an amazing top laner for solo queue because once you learn her limits, she can win a ton of matchups, but at the same time, you can be a complete noob and still carry off her tankiness and strong teamfight power. The gank assist is absolutely insane, especially if your jungler is melee, as you can lock the opponent down super easily with E stun. Summoner spells are ignite with teleport, so you have some sneaky kill power that the enemy will not respect. Matchup wise, Sejuani has a more difficult time against Mord, so he's a good ban to consider. You've got a couple different options for the build. Rushing Frostfire is standard for all games, but second item really depends on the situation. If you're playing against a very heavy auto-reliant AD enemy comp, then going Frozen Heart second is super broken. If not, then Winter's Approach is a good alternative. Third item depends on the game, as Thornmail or Force of Nature work great. Grasp is the keystone with Demolish, Second Wind, and Overgrowth. Optimal secondaries include Biscuits and Cosmic Insight. The top lane solo queue god for 12.14 is Darius as he locks in a spot in our top 3 once again. With dragons becoming stronger in 12.14, top lane will be even more isolated, which will allow good Darius players to feast. Darius loves playing into tank matchups, and with Sunfire nerfed, it's another indirect change that goes in his favor. Darius fares quite well into the majority of meta matchups. He's always had a more difficult time against Wukong, but he's not played often at all as a top laner right now. Wu is still a pretty good ban though due to his high jungle presence. Build for Darius is super versatile as you can rush Trinity for max damage or Stridebreaker for added utility. Death's Dance slots in second, and third item is extremely situational as Deadman, Sterics, Maw, or Force of Nature are viable depending on the situation. Conqueror is the best keystone with Triumph, Alacrity, and Last Stand, grab Second Wind, and Unflinching for secondaries. Fiddle is fresh off some massive buffs in 12.13, and 12.14 is going to be even better for him. Contesting and team fighting around Dragon will be so important this patch, and there are few junglers who do it better than Fiddle. The ultimate damage buff last patch provides Fiddle with even stronger teamfight power as well. Challenging Smite being nerfed will negatively affect many junglers, but since Fiddle runs Chilling Smite every game, it's another win for him. If you can keep track of Dragon Timers, set up around them before they spawn, and catch the enemy team in a choke with a multi-man ult, you're going to collect a ton of wins on Fiddle. Standard core build is a Rocket Belt Rush into Zhanya 2nd and Shadow Flame or Void Staff 3rd. Shadow against comps with low magic resist and Void against magic resist stackers. Run First Strike as the keystone with Perfect Timing, Futures Market, and Cosmic Insight. Best secondaries are Cheap Shot and Ultimate Hunter. Another jungler who's going to have huge priority for 12.14 is Diana. Like Fiddle, Diana is an amazing teamfight jungler who thrives in those choke points around Dragon and can punish mispositioning extremely hard. The Sunfire nerf puts a small dent in Diana's strength, but we can't see it significantly affecting her power level. Hybrid Diana build makes the champion way more forgiving and easier to execute, which is great for the average player. Even though pure one-shot is lower, extended fight power is stronger, which you could argue is actually more important post durability update. Pick Conqueror for the Keystone with Triumph, Alacrity, and Last Stand. Freeboots and Cosmic Insight are the best secondaries. 
Since securing dragons is going to be way more important now, adding Nunu to your champion pool will be great value. You're going to be able to single-handedly win games on Nunu for 12.14 just by hitting consistent Q smite combos on dragon. Nunu is a champion who can build Frostfire instead of Sunfire, so you don't gotta worry about the Sunfire nerfs at all. A very sleeper OP build for Nunu right now is actually Frostfire into Demonic Embrace. Items work extremely well in tandem due to Frostfire providing so much added health and Demonic Embrace converting 2% bonus health into AP. Third item to round out the core is a Warbox, which makes Demonic Embrace passive extremely valuable. Nunu's Q and Ultimate also scale off health, so you actually get some really good value out of building health on the champ. Phase Rush is Nunu's best keystone with Nimbus Cloak, Celerity, and Water Walking, Run Cheap Shot, and Relentless Hunter for secondaries. Talia has weaved her way back into a top tier position for mid lane and cracks the top 3 for 12.14. 12.13 buffs have been the driving force for Talia's rise up the tier list, and she's only going to be more valuable in 12.14. Not only can Talia impact the map extremely well with her roam power, but her zone control around objectives is insanely good, which bodes super well now that dragons are buffed. If you can win your own lane, transition that advantage across the map, and focus on objective timers, you should be seeing a ton of 15 minute wins. Cat or Zed are two of the better bands when playing Talia, as their high mobility can be difficult to play around. If you haven't swapped over to building Ludens on Talia, definitely look to do so. It's actually ludicrous how much more Ludens players win over Everfrost right now, as it's a 5% discrepancy. If everyone built Ludens on Talia, she would probably have the highest win rate for any mid laner. As for runes, prioritize first strike as the keystone with free boots, minion dematerializer, and cosmic insight. With biscuits nerfed this patch, you really shouldn't be running them unless you're in a highly volatile matchup. Secondaries are mana flow and transcendence. Kiana fits the theme of the patch incredibly well and is our second choice solo carry mid. You want the enemy team to start dragons and funnel into choke points when playing Kiana, which is going to give her so much value in 12.14. Controlling dragons and one-shotting the enemy team when they walk in is Kiana's specialty, so if you can pilot the champion well, the wins will be of plenty. Vex is one of the best bans for Kiana right now, as she counters her mobility extremely hard. As of the time we're making this video, there's actually a bug going around on Kiana that many players are starting to catch on to. When running first strike, if you use W while your Q is midair, then Kiana's passive will apply double damage. Who knows if this will be hotfixed or not, but it's definitely a big reason why First Strike users are winning about 3% more than Electric Q right now. For Kiana's build, Prowlers and Eclipse are viable mythics, followed by Manamune second and Cyrilda's Grudge third. Rune Page is of course First Strike, with Free Boots, Futures Market, and Cosmic Insight. Grab Sudden Impact and Treasure Hunter for secondaries. Rounding out the mid lane solo carries for 12.14 is going to be Swain. Swain may not be as flashy of a pick as Kiana, but if you're looking for a very consistent and reliable mid lane pickup, he's one of the best right now. Swain doesn't require nearly as much mechanical skill as someone like Kiana, but he can still be a major force in teamfights and has a very unique playstyle for a mid lane mage. Most mages want to sit back and space perfectly in the back line, while Swain wants to play front line, soaking a ton of damage with his ult and being a massive disruptor. As more and more players begin to prioritize Ghost on Swain, his win rate continues to rise. The biggest downside to Swain is being kited and not being able to stick in the middle of fights, but with Ghost, that's no longer an issue. Look to ban out Victor when playing Swain, as his zone control and consistent damage can be difficult to play around. Mythic item on Swain is super versatile, as you can run Leandries for more solo carry power, or Imperial Mandate if your team is ahead and you want to buff them up even more. Rylai's is very key, and Zanya's or Demonic Embrace round out the core. Conqueror or Phase Rush are equally as impactful for Swain depending on the game. Phase Rush works amazing in a skill shot reliant comps with heavy CC, while Conqueror is great otherwise. Despite the 12.14 nerfs, Sivir is going to remain a top 3 solo carry ADC. It's really just the W damage to minion nerf that is going to hurt a bit, but even then it's barely a tickle. The mini rework has brought back so much strength to crit Sivir, and she has the ability to unleash a ton of consistent DPS thanks to the W changes. The fact Sivir's ultimate now resets on takedowns is such a season 12 buff that it really amplifies her teamfight strength and ability to clean up fights. As we've mentioned throughout the video, team fighting around Dragon will be even more important now, and Sivir is one of the best for those situations. Build for Sivir is pretty straightforward, as a Kraken Rush and a Phantom Dancer or Essence Reaver 2nd and Infinity Edge 3rd works best. Since Sivir receives some hotfix nerfs to her W mana cost in 12.13, Essence Reaver does become a more valuable pickup now. Best Rune Page is Lethal Tempo with Presence of Mind, Bloodline, and Cutdown. Grab Absolute Focus and Gathering Storm for secondaries. This new meta we're seeing on certain ADCs like Twitch is super interesting. Twitch has been one of the best ADCs for multiple patches now, but a new summoner spell combination is leading to even more power. 
It was back in 12.10 where Flash with Ghost started seeing some play, but was only picked in 1% of games. Fast forward to 12.14 and Ghost with Flash is played in over 10% of games on Twitch and winning more than any other summoner combination. With Exhaust nerfed in 12.14, this new Ghost tech is going to become even more godlike. When you think about it, it's actually strange we haven't seen Ghost in ADC at all in the past since positioning is so vital for the role. With Ghost on Twitch, you can find pick plays easier, kite around in fights easier, and be more self-sufficient and less reliant on your team for peel. The core build for Twitch is a Blade Rush into Kraken Slayer 2nd and Hurricane or Rage Blade 3rd. Rune Page is Lethal Tempo with Presence of Mind, Alacrity, and Cutdown. Secondaries include Taste of Blood and Ultimate Hunter. And our final solo carry ADC of the patch is going to be Jin. Due to the exhaust nerfs this patch, look to try out ghosts on Jin as well. Like Twitch, Jin relies on positioning more than most ADCs due to lacking a gap closer, so ghosts can be extremely valuable throughout the game. One thing to keep in mind for Jin this patch is that the boots with four potions start become significantly weaker. Potion healing drops from 150 to 120, so going back to a Doran's Blade start will be best for most games. Core build for Jin is a Gale Force Rush into the Collector 2nd and Rapid Fire Cannon 3rd. For runes, pick up Fleet as the Keystone with Presence of Mind, Bloodline, and cut down. Stay away from Inspiration Secondary as Biscuits and Time Warp are nerfed. Instead, dip into Sorcery and grab Celerity with Gathering Storm. With Enchanters becoming weaker for 12.14, Amumu will be one of the best solo carry supports. Majority of players are really sleeping on the pick as his buffs from a couple patches back have been massive. A ton of pros have been playing Amumu in solo queue, but his overall play rate remains on the lower side. Early game kill power and all-in potential is extremely potent with Amumu as his 2Q charges provide excellent lockdown. Pair Amumu up with an ADC like Sivir or MF and your 2v2 at level 6 and teamfight power throughout the game is insane. Even Shroud is Amumu's best mythic with Zhanya 2nd and Thornmail or Frozen Heart 3rd. For runes, grab Aftershock followed by Font of Life, Bone Plating and Unflinching. Cheap Shot and Ultimate Hunter are the go-to secondaries. For the first time in ages, we don't have multiple enchanters in our top three for support as Pike is our second pick of the patch. Pike is coming off some indirect buffs from 12.13 due to lethality mythic changes, which are providing him a small boost. It's really the changes this patch though that will help move Pike up even more as enchanter mythic items are being nerfed. Health potions are being hit as well, which really helps these more aggressive supports like Pike who want to be looking for all in plays. Exhaust losing early game power is another great change for Pike, so lots of positives for the champ over the past two patches. Umbral Glaive Rush into Duskblade or Prowler's Claw 2nd is the two item core. Third item is extremely situation dependent as Edge of Night, Ghost Blade, Death Stance, and Maw have a place. For runes, run Hail of Blades with Cheap Shot, Zombie Ward, and Ultimate Hunter. And the final solo carry support for 12.14 is going to be Tarek. Lots of enchanters who prioritize Moonstone will become weaker this patch, but Tarek runs Locket or Shirelia, so he'll be just fine. Ever since Tarek was buffed a few patches back, he's been absolutely dominant and fits into the solo queue meta extremely well. There are few supports who will offer more solo carry power than Tarek this patch, as team fighting around Dragon becomes more pivotal. Good ultimate usage when the enemy team tries to commit to taking down Dragon can lead to a complete wash for your team. Core Tarek build is Locket or Shirelia's Rush into Winter's Approach 2nd and Frozen Heart, Knight's Vow, or Zeke's 3rd. With Guardian nerfed in 12.14, Glacial Augment will become Tarek's best keystone pickup for the majority of games. Alright guys, before we wrap this up, let's tell you a little more about skill cap. So, we offer a 5 division rank up guarantee and think that's a pretty crazy thing to offer. It's like a gym membership guaranteeing you'll get ripped. Your local gym would go bust if they offered that, right? Not us. We've offered this for years because our service really does work. It works so well, in fact, that we're able to produce by far the largest catalog of premium league guides on the internet. We add over 20 videos a week. With over 1,600 guides curated into over 100 courses, no one can compare. We've also sent challenger players into ELO Hell 714 times and counting, where they commentate how to carry live. They also respond to all questions asked. Sign up today for as little as $6.99 a month if you are serious about improving. Thank you guys so much for watching, good luck in solo queue, and we'll see you in the next one.